Hi there, biologists. This is your screencast session four for our unit on biotechnology. Uh, this screencast is going to be all about cloning. So um, let's very briefly talk about the three different types of cloning that I'm going to discuss with you in this particular screencast session. Uh, gene cloning, which is just making more copies of a particular gene. Reproductive cloning, which is making genetically identical copies of an entire new organism. And then therapeutic cloning, which is cloning for the purpose of trying to uh, improve the health of some sort of patient, that is therapy. So let's get right to it. Let's talk about gene cloning first. Um, <clears throat> gene cloning is something that happens as a natural consequence of the reproduction of transgenic organisms. So for example, let's say we've got a bacterium that contains a recombinant DNA plasmid, and of course our gene of interest could be the human insulin gene or, or what have you, uh, is in that recombinant plasmid. As that cell that contains that plasmid begins to prepare to reproduce itself, one of the things that's got to happen is that the DNA will replicate itself naturally. So as a natural consequence of this organism's reproduction, particularly these single cell bacteria, what they do is a simple splitting, we call that binary fission, but the DNA in those cells are going to replicate before those cells uh, reproduce themselves as well. So um, as the DNA is replicated, more copies of that gene are going to be produced. And of course, if you want to amplify DNA after you extract it, uh, or a particular gene, what you can do is this polymerase chain reaction, PCR, using a thermal cycler device. And we discussed that at length in an earlier screencast, so I don't feel I need to go into too much more detail there. <clears throat> now, when we talk about reproductive cloning, what we're talking about is producing an entire new organism that's genetically identical, kind of like you see here in this little cartoon. Well, I'm going to break this down into three separate ways that uh, reproductive cloning can happen. And the first is going to be our horticultural reproductive cloning. And horticulture is the, the art and the science of uh, growing plants. Now, as you see pictured here, this is something that's called zebrinia. And I actually have some right here in this big glass jar. And I'm going to show you how I can clone zebrinia. And it's actually a fairly simple process. So here's... Um, a zebrinia plant. Notice there's root structure right here and then there's some branches. What I'm going to do is actually pull this branch off from the main stem. I'll put this back in the jar to keep it wet. And so this is from the, that original plant and so of course this stem that I broke off is genetically identical to that original um, plant. What I can do with this particular type of plant is now put this in water and at these little structures, uh, these are called nodes, what will happen is that this plant will start producing its own little root system and so I'm going to put this in with a bunch of other little small stems that I've pulled off of larger parts of the plant, put it in some water, and what will happen is that it will grow its own root structure and eventually I can put that into its own little uh, bucket of soil and I'll have multiple plants all broken from the original plant and so because of that they're genetically identical and technically they're clones. This type of horticulture reproductive cloning is commonly practiced with uh, grapevines uh, in vineyards and so if you have a really really great vintage grape and we want more uh, copies of this particular organism because it grows great grapes for wine or something like that you want to make more clones of something that's very productive you can just pop off those uh, vines and grow new genetically identical plants so that's cloning in the easiest sense now reproductive cloning with organisms that are a little bit a little bit more complex it, <clears throat> was actually first done in an experiment actually published in 1902 by a German embryologist, embryologist by the name of Hans uh, Spiemann. And what he did is he took a little hair from his little baby boy, yanked it off, I know I don't have enough hair for this, tied a little loop in his boy's hair, and he took um, that hair and teased apart an amphibian embryo at an early developmental stage. Now, the natural uh, process of reproduction is when you get two haploid cells, a sperm cell and an egg cell, they fertilize, they fuse, and you create what we call a zygote. And that one cell develops into two, and those two cells develop into four, and those four cells develop into eight. And if you catch an embryo at this early stage, if you can uh, tease apart those cells, 
an entire new organism will grow from those separated cells. And this is what Spiman did. He actually took that hair loop that I was talking about earlier and tied it around uh, some cells and he pinched off one cell or perhaps a couple cells from the rest of the cells and the result was two separate organisms uh, that were genetically identical uh, grew from those split apart cells. And the reason he was able to do this is that he was working with amphibians and if you know about amphibians and their life cycle, the adult stage of salamanders and frogs or newts or whatever, they live in the water, they lay their eggs in the water which are fertilized in the water and so the embryos develop in these egg sacs just in the water so they're really easy to access. This is uh, a much harder thing to do to get to uh, mammalian embryos. Uh, so cloning mammalian embryos is a lot more difficult, but we'll talk about those steps later. <clears throat> the same process that Spiman used um, in the lab to produce genetically identical clones of amphibians by teasing apart a zygote is what happens naturally when identical twins are produced. Um, these two fellas here and these two ladies here, these are twins, identical twins. This is different than fraternal twins. Identical twinning happens when you've got a single zygote that's produced. And at, a, and at a very early stage, the cells come apart for whatever reason, and those separate cells develop themselves into entirely separate organisms, which of course, because they came from the same original cell, would be genetically identical. Technically, identical twins, like these two guys and these two young ladies at the bottom of the screen, are clones. Now they don't look exactly alike because, as as, it, as is the case with uh, identical twins, you're, there are some environmental um, considerations that impact the expression of genes, and so they don't look 100% exactly alike, but they look very, 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 very similar, of course. So when we talk about cloning in uh, organisms that isn't twinning, we're going to talk about a technique called somatic cell nuclear transfer and that's how we can have a sheep that looks like this. This is a Scottish blackface sheep. Uh, give birth to a sheep that is not a Scottish blackface, uh, uh, Scottish blackface face sheep, excuse me. <clears throat> and the process, just to compare twinning versus this other process, um, I have this diagram. The process that I'm talking about is called somatic cell nuclear transfer. Now, let's talk about the top part of this diagram um, first. Let's say we've got a male sheep and a female sheep. Um, the natural reproduction process is for the male to produce sperm, which is a haploid, that means half the amount of DNA, a sex cell, and the mother produce a egg sex cell with half the amount of DNA, and when those two cells fuse, we get what we call a zygote. And if that one zygote develops into one entire organism, this is offspring, or this is baby, uh, and you can see that this baby is a combination of this red and this blue here, which of course symbolize the DNA from mother and father. Now, if twinning were to occur, the result is we get genetically identical twins, but that's as a result of that early stage embryo, perhaps the two to four to eight cell stage embryo, one cell or a couple cells break away and they develop into entirely separate organisms, which of course would be genetically identical. Well, let's say you don't want to have that process or rely on that natural twinning process, but you want to do cloning. Well, <clears throat> a process developed called somatic cell nuclear transfer is where a somatic cell taken from an organism that you want to clone is taken, perhaps a skin cell or something like that, and the DNA or the genetic information from that donor cell is taken out and put into an empty egg or an empty oocyte. Now if you take this DNA and put it into this egg, you technically then have a zygote because it's got the double amount of DNA, a diploid cell, and if you subject it to a little bit of treatment, uh, generally a little bit of an electrical shock, will get it to start to develop into another embryo. And this uh, organism here is going to be genetically identical to the donor cell uh, of the somatic cell. <clears throat> and this is called somatic cell nuclear transfer. Now, if we're going to do nuclear transfer cloning, let's go through the steps. Again, what you're going to do is obtain an egg from a donor. So let's say this sheep is our donor of an egg. Uh, you're going to remove the DNA from that egg. Uh, 
And then you need to get a somatic cell from the donor to be cloned. So let's say we have this donor sheep and we want to get some uh, skin cells or what have you from this particular sheep. You take the DNA from that somatic cell, so take the DNA out of this cell, and put it into the egg cell that's had its DNA removed. That's this step here. And you activate it with a little jolt of electricity. And what you then need to do is to take that developing embryo and put it back into the reproductive tract, namely the uterus, of uh, an organism that's going to carry that embryo to term. And what happens is this sheep that's born, or the lamb that's born, is genetically identical to this donor sheep up here, not necessarily looking like the sheep that carried it. <clears throat> now, this idea of mammalian uh, cloning frightened a lot of people. A lot of questions were asked about whether or not we should be doing something just because we uh, can do something. So here's a little video clip um, just to um, rest, uh, help you guys rest assured a little bit that this wasn't creating some type of Frankenstein-like monster. With an understanding of how environment shapes our lives, cloning could make it possible to create the perfect human. She came from the land of Loch Ness, an ominous creature with a mysterious past. More frightening than Frankenstein, more shocking than Godzilla. Meet Dolly, the world's most famous clone. Here she is. You couldn't find a more unassuming creature to cause such a stir. But from the reaction to the news of her birth at Scotland's Roslyn Institute, you might have thought a monster had been unveiled. There was a story in, in one of the American magazines which suggested that uh, Dolly was a, a killer sheep and attacked her keeper. It's uh, pure fantasy. You can see how friendly she is. Biologist Bill Ritchie is one of Dolly's creators. He is as close to a father figure as the little sheep will ever know. Dolly didn't have a real father because she didn't need one. She's an exact genetic copy of a six-year-old ewe, the first mammal ever created from the non-reproductive tissue of an adult animal. It wasn't long before she jumped directly from the Petri dish to the TV screen. A star was born, and popular culture embraced her. So that's the story of Dolly, uh, and a lot of people were really concerned about whether or not we should have made Dolly. Um, but since Dolly has been uh, cloned, uh, We've successfully cloned cats, we've successfully cloned uh, horses, uh, cows, uh, you know, the process of mammalian somatic cell nuclear transfer cloning really pretty much is the same for any type of mammal, which means, yes, we can do it for humans, but there is no known human clone that has actually been re-implanted and carried to term. Let's talk about therapeutic cloning, for, for instance, here. Um, which involves somatic cell nuclear transfer. Let's say, for example, we have a sick patient here who needs some type of therapy. Therapeutic and the word therapy have the same root word here. This is Michael J. Fox, and he is a strong advocate of something called stem cell therapy, which the details of will be explained in the next screencast by Mr. Gales. Uh, Mr. Fox um, would like to <clears throat> get better from his Parkinson's disease. And the thought is that one way we could make him get better, because Parkinson's disease affects his brain and his nerve cells, uh, and nerve cells don't regrow and don't repair themselves, um, is to do therapeutic cloning. So what we'd need to do is to do a somatic cell nuclear transfer with one of Mr. Fox's cells and put that into an, uh, an egg that has had its nucleus removed and make an embryo that is genetically identical to Mr. Fox as a result and let those cells grow a little bit, never with the um, purpose or intention of making it grow into another Michael J. Fox, uh, but actually to, at the early stage, 
pull apart that embryo so that we have these stem cells, which we call stem cells because they can stem into any different type of cell. They can differentiate into nerve cells, they can differentiate into muscle cells or liver cells or what have you, depending on what particular pathway of development they take. <clears throat> and the idea is to give back Michael J. Fox some of these stem cells, which would be genetically identical to him. And the value of that is that because they're genetically identical or clones, cell clones of him, they, uh, there wouldn't be any type of tissue rejection issue, which is commonly an issue with uh, um, organ donation transfer or transplantation. And this is a really promising thing that maybe could help uh, patients get better, and the details of that Mr. Gales will explain in Screencast 5. Let's just contrast uh, reproductive versus therapeutic cloning because there's some similarities with it, and there, of course there are some differences as well. Both type of uh, cloning processes, both reproductive and therapeutic cloning, would start with somatic cell nuclear transfer, which is this part of this diagram up here. But the intent of reproductive cloning is to actually take those cloned cells and implant it back into a surrogate mother for the idea, for the, for the purpose of producing an entire new organism which is genetically identical. Therapeutic cloning doesn't do that transplanting of the embryo back into the reproductive tract step. What happens is you take those cells and you just keep those cells rather than allowing them to develop into another uh, individual organism. You have your tissue culture and from that tissue culture you could develop some type of therapy to make a patient better. Now this is the end of this presentation. Hopefully you learned some stuff about cloning, gene cloning, reproductive cloning, which is like organism cloning, and then of course therapeutic cloning. That's it for now ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hope you have good notes and we'll see you next time.